Okay, recording is running. Yes, uh, hello and good evening to all who will watch this video later on. Uh, today we will run a session on uh, setup and configuration. Um, we already had this session quite a while ago, but uh, I decided to redo it to have a video of it. Uh, by the way, one of our community members uh, has uh, also made a session in German. He uh, sent it to me today and uh, I will link it in the video tutorial section as well. He's uh, very engaged uh, with simulator controller. The session is almost two hours long. It's great, but uh, yes, for most of uh, you, uh, English is uh, the much better language for this uh, coaching session. Okay, um, setup and configuration. I think most of you know the the software package is quite quite large, quite complex, has lots of functions. So the configuration is not an easy task, and uh, especially in the beginning. Uh, uh, of simulator controller, it was a pain in the butt <laughs> to to say it uh, frankly. Um, and um, yes, we will go today to uh, through the different tools you can use to uh, set up and configure the software, and we will see also some some tricks to uh, work with the uh, generated configuration. And we will we'll have, as always, enough time for your questions. Please jump in whenever you want to, to ask a uh, detail or bring a different perspective. Uh, I will be uh, yeah, I will be happy to, to answer this. Okay, then let's start. Um, once you have uh, installed the software using the installer, which you can download from uh, GitHub, uh, normally you will automatically start the configuration process unless you have uh, unchecked this checkbox which most of you won't do I know and uh, this will start the so-called simulator setup wizard um, before we go in go uh, into this uh, app mm, I must uh, get a little bit more into the details what uh, the configuration for the software package uh, is um there are there is a folder in your local documents folder which is named simulator controller and therein there is a folder named config everything which you configure will be available as different files in this uh, folder most of these files are human readable, so you can open it using a text editor, uh, take a look what's going on, but you also have the applications here to, to work with these uh, configuration files. Um, there are two different applications. The first one, we will go through this most of the time of this session, is uh, this wizard. The approach of this wizard is uh, that you you can interact with the wizard and describe what you want from the configuration and the wizard will then generate the configuration files at the end of the uh, of your session with the wizard. Uh, also, all the uh, data you entered into the wizard will be stored so you can rerun it as often as you like until the configuration is the way you want it. The other application, which is the older one, it was available uh, first for configuring the software, uh, goes in a different approach. This application, Simulator Configuration, directly reads and modifies all these configuration files. So this is very important for you to know. As long as you want the wizard to, to be available to you, must be very careful when you use this configuration application. Simulator configuration is much more capable, will give you more functionalities to, to work with the configuration because it offers you all the low-level details which are available. But, as I said, it will work directly on the configuration files and when you 
then reuse the wizard which generates the application files from the database, everything you have done here will be overwritten. I also recommend to stay with the wizard as long as possible but because it is much easier to use than, with, than the low-level configuration application which uh, requires a very deep knowledge of the inner workings of uh, the software package. Okay, this set up front, so let's begin. We will start with uh, simulator setup. It will open a splash screen, which you can't see because it's on my uh, main screen. But then you will be greeted by this window with a nice video of our all-beloved hobby. And um, as you're already looking at this, you can switch to the next page using the buttons below. You can also move uh, back using this button and uh, the wizard will guide you through the uh, configuration process step by step. Whenever you've, uh, read, you are ready with the current step, you can switch to the next one. Uh, the first one... Um, oh, I see I must switch to English, sorry. We need to wait another second, a few seconds, for the startup process. Okay, now it's running in English. Um, this step is unfortunately sometimes necessary when you download the software because uh, Windows is uh, quite... Um, uh, uh, tries to be a secure operating system and blocks uh, applications which have been downloaded from the internet and um, these unblocking of applications might sometimes be necessary. So whenever you get uh, errors uh, that an application can't be started, uh, you have uh, to use this um, unblocking step. Click on the restart as administrator and he will try to unblock and uh, t tell Windows that all the applications and uh, dynamic link libraries uh, of my software is secure and uh, usable and without a virus and so on. Normally you won't have to do this when you have used the standard installer process uh, because there the unblocking has... Um, been done already and this uh, page will be skipped. Okay, then uh, the most important part of the setup configuration is the selection of the modules you want to use from, from the software. Um, simulator controller uh, comes with uh, different uh, sets of functionalities, for example, for using your uh, hardware controllers to control everything. You can use a voice control uh, to, to, to talk to and to uh, interact with the chatbots. Uh, you have uh, modules uh, to uh, control a motion rig or vibration motors using SimHub and so on. For this uh, tutorial, we will make it as simple as possible. We will select voice control. We will also work with controller and input devices. We don't have a motion rig for uh, this uh, session. We don't have any tactile feedback uh, options. We don't want to uh, um, use um, pedal calibrations for, for high-end pedals like Heusingfeld. But we want to use the race engineer, the uh, virtual race assistant, um, which helps you uh, in managing your car, f your pit stops and so on. We will want also use the race strategist and the race spotter. So we will leave this checked. Um, this page allows you to load um, a couple of presets will, which will um, yeah, modify the configuration which will be generated in the end or which will uh, create uh, presets for the later steps of the uh, configuration process. For example, 
we can use a predefined button box layout. There are several of them here to use. We can use predefined uh, Stream Deck layouts and so on. We won't use any of them for now, but we will come to back, back to this page uh, later on. Okay, in the next step, <coughs> we um, can and we have to uh, install uh, additional software components from third parties. For example, here, the uh, Microsoft Speech Runtime and Speech Libraries um, we want to use for speech recognition. Uh, simply click here on the install button. It will start a standard installer. This will take a few seconds. Okay, finish. We will also install the English language package. We will also install the German language package. And if you want to use a different language, which is possible, um, but you have to uh, supply the uh, translations for the grammar files uh, as well. Some uh, This is stuff for, for a different coaching session. You can also you install different language packs, packages if you, if you have them. Um, I absolutely recommend to install SOX, which is already installed on my system, which uh, is a little application to post-process audio, which I use to create um, a sound which is uh, quite similar to, to a typical uh, team radio in a car with lots of distortions and, and so on. Uh, very good stuff for the immersion. Uh, Sim, feedback, Sim feedback and Stream Deck extension is uh, used for the uh, motion rig control and uh, tactile feedback control. Um, SimHub smart control are also third-party tools. Um, I think you know, most of you will know them. And uh, last but not least, we have near command. Uh, this is a small utility I use to uh, create audio blendings to, to uh, manage audio volumes. Um, I strongly recommend uh, to install this, although it is optional. Because uh, in the upcoming release, uh, this tool will be used to mute uh, one assistant, which is currently talking, when the spotter has a very urgent warning for you. For example, that uh, a car behind you will dive bomb. So um, near command will be used to mute the currently talking uh, race engineer, for example, so that the spotter can uh, tell you what's going on. Okay, and... Um, we already have installed it, but we need to locate it because near command is not a typical installable application. It's a simple exe. You will have to place anywhere on your hard disk. You have to find this location, select it, and it is found and installed. Okay, this one we can skip. And then we will reach the page of the simulators. The uh, wizard will search on, on different locations, for example, in the registry or in um, the Steam library folders, which uh, simulation games you ha have installed. And I think you will check all of them. Um, but you might, uh, for example, leave a set of causa disabled, so uh, it will be unknown to simulator controller. Um, one word about Steam. Um, most of these applications are um, controlled by Steam. Uh, Steam has a file format uh, to uh, where it stores the location of the games uh, that uh, has been installed by Steam. This uh, file is named library folders dot VCF, I think. And uh, when your games cannot be found here, most of the time it is a problem with this uh, file format. Uh, so if your games cannot be found, please contact me. We will figure this out, uh, what you need to do to uh, change in these uh, library folders files so that everything uh, will be uh, recognized here. 
In the next step, um, the tool tries to identify other applications which uh, might be useful and known to simulator controller. For example, the MoTeC telemetry uh, has been found on my uh, hard disk, um, RST telemetry, TeamSpeak, and other stuff. And um, if you check them, they are known to simulator controller and can, for example, be started by a push of a button on the button box, if you want this. Okay, then uh, we are already there. Um, if you have checked um, the um, controller, hardware controller devices uh, as uh, one of the uh, modules, you will now have the opportunity to configure your controllers. Um, <coughs> controllers, there are many types of them. You have your steering wheel, you have your keyboard, you have might have button boxes, you might have a stream deck, and uh, all of them can be configured here. What you have to do is uh, to create a controller, um, which uh, groups uh, a couple of controls. And um, you have two types of uh, controllers available. The first one, it's named button box, but it can also be a steering wheel or the keyboard. In the end, it means it's a collection of, of uh, buttons you can, can press. The other one, this is very special and will be covered uh, in a separate uh, tutorial or coaching session, uh, is uh, the su support for stream decks. Let's work now with button boxes and um, we will create a new one. We name it wheel. Um, it will have two buttons. So we will have uh, a layout of one by two, one row of two buttons. Um, and I say add. So what you will get then is a small window, which is a a type of placeholder and yes, from it will look like a typical button box. It has two available spaces, uh, one row of two buttons. And to create controls here, you simply have to click on the space and can choose a control which is for now empty. Okay, let's create a control. We name it button. It will be a button, but you have different control types, for example, dials, one-way toggles, two-way toggles, and so on. You can choose an image, which will be used here as a representative. For example, we use this one. And we will have a size of 40 by 40 pixels. And now it's here and can be chosen. Um, the second one, let's uh, create a dial here. Different picture. Add. And we created a dial. So we have now two, let's clear this two logical input devices created on for our wheelbase, for our wheel. Because it's a wheel, we never want to, to have uh, a visual representation on our screen, so we uncheck the visible um, option here. When you have a real button box, it might be helpful to have if you have enough screen space, a visual representation of the uh, button box on your screen to see what's going on. And to really see what's going on, you can create labels. For example, 40 by 20, which you can add here to see which action of simulator controller is currently available on this button or on this rotary, on this dial. 
okay. Ähm. So, the next step here is to tell the software because this is a logical button or and this is a logical uh, dial for the moment. You must now tell the software which physical device on your button box, on your steering wheel or on your keyboard will trigger this button. This is quite simple. For example, we click here with the left mouse button and a small tooltip will appear which uh, tells you that the software is now searching for a physical button to be pressed which will then be associated with this button. Okay, I will now press a button on my steering wheel. Okay, he found it and says it is the 15th button on the third connected joy this is the terminology of the underlying software. Everything is a joystick, uh, but in the end it's a USB connected uh, controller device. So it's a third USB controller and there the fifth control. We will now this do the same for the dial. He will search for the dial and now you have to rotate the dial for ex first counterclockwise until this movement is uh, accepted. It can take quite a while because it must uh, it can take quite a while. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Um, and now you must again rotate it into the other direction, clockwise. Okay. So he found input device 28 for decrease and 29 for increase. Now we have created or bound this um, input for the further configuration steps. What you can also do here is with the right mouse button assigning additional hotkeys. This one, this one is a hotkey. You can Take a look at the documentation. There is a list of all hotkeys. And you have not only this one to identify physical buttons on a connected USB controller, but you can also, for example, use keys from the keyboard, function keys, numpad keys, and you can also use modifiers uh, as additional um, yeah, parts of your hotkey and um, to use this here as example you can have more than one hotkey to trigger this button number one for example this one says if you press control A on the keyboard this will have the identical effect of pressing the button on the steering wheel we associated before. And, much more funny, you can also define voice commands here. If you have a leading question mark, which um, this means you will have a voice phrase which will also trigger this logical button number one. You can say pit stop which is uh, in the end the same as pressing the button. Okay, any questions so far?
not. Fine, then let's go on. No, we will go back. As I said here before, we have uh, presets here and we will now use one of the presets. Move it over to the right. And now you have here This is the steering wheel controller we d uh, prepared before and this is the button box we loaded from the preset. So we have a lot of additional buttons now we can configure. So you can see you can also use this as a starting configuration and then uh, change the layout to uh, to your real button box you have for example your button box might be smaller it will only have four columns okay save so one column has been deleted and this one will be a dial here this one too and now you can enter the uh, the triggers for all these uh, buttons and move on. Okay, for the further steps we will delete this. So we only have the controller we configured before. Okay, so n in, the, in the coming steps you then use um, the, the controller devices to uh, associate them with actions or commands from the different modules of uh, simulator controller. Um, the first um, we can do here is, for example, we can create launch buttons for all the applications we uh, uh, the, the software has recognized in one of the steps before. We will skip this for this for the moment and uh, take a look uh, at the voice control, which we also have selected as one of the avail available modules and uh, which is very important to interact with the uh, race assistants. Um, to you have um, first to select the language you want to interact with um, your assistance two languages are available because uh, I for myself uh, manage the uh, grammars for the uh, assistance in, in German and in English um, but it is possible to uh, translate uh, the grammar files to a different uh, language and if you if you have done that uh, this language will be available here as well the language you see here is the language of the user interface. The same here. Two translations are available from, from the standard, uh, which uh, is provided by, by, uh, by me. But uh, you can translate the software if you have <laughs> enough time to Italian, for example, which uh, would be great for the community. Nobody has done this so far, but maybe time will tell. Um, so, using this one, we will have a German user interface um, and um, English as the voice output and voice recognition um, language. Then you have uh, to select the uh, speech synthesizer method you want to use. There are three different types of speech um, generation capabilities available. The first one, Win32, uh, is the oldest one, which has been available, I think, since uh, Windows 7. Um, or even older, I, I'm, I'm unsure. 
I'm not sure. Um, then Windows.net, which has been introduced uh, at least with Windows 7. Um, and you also have uh, ah, and you have um, the um, possibility to use Azure co uh, Cognitive Services, uh, the the cloud um, services uh, from Microsoft to generate uh, the voice. Uh, this is. Um, Document, uh, you can read about it in the documentation. You have to create an Azure um, account, which is um, for free, uh, unless you are racing and talking <laughs> 12 hours a day. Uh, you have, uh, I think, 500,000 of um, translated characters uh, per month for free. I've never paid uh, any euro here. It's uh, great qual quality and uh, totally to recommend uh, Azure, but you have to create a, an account there. Um, after you've selected the synthesizer, I recommend to start with Windows.net. You will have the available voices in the selected language here. If you stick to automatic, um, um, simulator controller will use one of these voices by a random in each session, so we will have some some kind of variation. But on the other hand, uh, you will uh, might end up with a voice which is not uh, of uh, the right uh, uh, right dialect for you. For example, in German, there are uh, Austrian dialects available. Maybe you want to choose the voice you want to have here by default. And we will see this later on. You can uh, also configure a, an individual voice for each assistant, which is uh, very important to differentiate. Um, f yeah, which, which uh, assistant is currently talking. Um, for now, we will leave it on automatic. More or less the same here is the recognizer. There are also three different recognizer engines available. I recommend to start with the desktop one, which is built in into, uh, into the Windows operating system. The server um, will be available if you have installed this recognition runtimes. We have done this at the beginning of the session. Um, this solution is for um, more degraded audio quality. Um, these libraries has been um, uh, built by Microsoft for telephony services. Uh, so you can uh, imagine that they uh, can cope with uh, distortions and stuff like that. For example, if you are using a room microphone and not a headset, it might be beneficial to use this uh, server uh, library, the server recognizer, which can handle a room microphone quality, but you will might you might end up with some false positives because the recognition quality is not so high as if you run the desktop recognition engine and a headset microphone. And also here, the Azure cloud services are also available, which offer the best of both worlds, very high quality and also very high recognition quality. So if you have an Azure content, uh, Azure, um, an account use this one. Also here, different recognition engines to choose from here for telephony services and so on. The next thing you have to do, you, and I strongly recommend to do this, is to define a push to talk button. It is possible to use the uh, voice recognition without the push to talk button, at least um, if you're using a headset, but 
whenever you have uh, alien noises in the room, for example, if you are using loudspeakers or so on, you will have a lots of false positive if you don't use a push to talk button because then the recognition engine is always working and try to interpret uh, what's going on and uh, will uh, yeah give you false positives and if you use the azure cognitive services for recognition where you have let's uh, remember i think a couple of hours, five hours of recognition time per month for free, it is absolutely recommended to use push to talk because otherwise you will end up with uh, a depleted uh, recognition um, time uh, quite fast. So to configure push to talk, press here. It's the same as before. You will get this uh, pop-up and the system will wait for a button on your steering wheel or whatever to be pressed. I now press one. Oh, my steering wheel is off. I need to press a button from the button box. Okay, this one. Great. This field here, I won't talk about it in detail, you can read about it in the documentation, allows you to create an activation phrase for your controller hardware. We have seen before that you can uh, define um, uh, voice commands for, for virtual buttons. Uh, and uh, if you have... Uh, done this you also have to to have an activation phrase to tell simulator controller that the next command will act will be for your hardware and not for one of the race assistants leave this blank for the moment um, this is really a power user feature if you want to use this uh, there's enough stuff uh, in the documentation for that Okay, let's move on. Now we will um, come to the simulator configuration page where you um, can, for each of the available simulators, define which actions will be bound to which of your controllers, controller buttons. Okay, we only have one controller button here and one dial. So not much to play with, but let's start. Okay, for Assetto Corsa Competizione, we want this button to, for example, toggle tire change in the so-called pit stop mode. A word about modes. Um, a button box or also the button boxes on your steering wheel are quite restricted. You will only have a couple of buttons or a couple of controls and as you can see here and there are much more on the coming pages simulator controller has lots of actions, lots of functions you can bound to these uh, controllers. Therefore the software package has a concept called modes. A mode is a kind of layer or a group of controls which will be active in a given time. For example, the pit stop mode, yes, it has commands or actions which has something to do with the pit stop control in, a, in the simulator. Um, the assistant mode groups all the commands you can use to interact with the race assistants. And we that have configured this module, for example, the motion feedback mode is a group of actions which you can use to control the motion feedback strength, for example, how much uh, your rig will dive forward uh, when you push on the brakes and so on. The modes, each of your configured controller will have one and exactly one active mode at the time. And you can switch modes by 
the push of the button. Therefore, you have here the so-called mode selector. One moment. You can say we have one button on our button box. Okay, a button box with two controls is <laughs> not very good. Very, uh, yeah, a good example for that. We will have one button, which is the mode selector. And if you push this button, you will cycle through all the modes which are currently available and the meaning of the other controls on this device will switch to the meaning of the different modes. We will see this later. Uh, once we've, we, we have finished with uh, the wizard, I will load my configuration, which is very, very complex, and we will see this where, there. For the moment, we will clear this, so with the, we have this button again available to bind it here for a set of cause of competition. And now we will say this button will toggle the tire change. Set action, click here on tire change. And it says, okay, on will be button one. Yes, we will not have to uh, define um, the off because if you only have a push button, you will toggle between on and off all the time. But if you have, if you have, well, if you have a switch here, which has an on and an off position, you might uh, use it for tire change really as a, and use it as a switch. Uh, the dial here we want to use for refuel. Refuel amount. So it already knows refuel amount. You can increase your refuel amount or decrease it. So he knows the dial has two directions, increase and decrease. So it's a binary control. This uh, button here is a unary control. A binary control is quite handy for refuel. Okay. No more buttons here. So we are ready. We are ready to move on. You can use a different simulator and uh, also bind the controls here. We will leave it for now. I think you got the concept. Okay, let's move to the race engineer configuration. The race engineer configuration will also offer you a lot of actions you can bind to your hardware. The difference here is that all these actions are not bound to a mode as on the previous page. But these actions here are so-called plug-in actions which will always be available. So use them sparely if you have a limited set of controls. Otherwise, you won't have enough space to play with uh, your modes. If you, have, you, if you have a controller with five buttons and you bind five plug-in actions, okay, these are available all the time, but you have no buttons left for the pit stop mode. Um, the method here is the same. Click on the control, say set action, and then click on the action here, and it will be associated with this button. What you also have here is uh, a number of settings for each simulator. For the race engineer, you can tell uh, what to do at the beginning of a session, where to get all the settings uh, from. We have talked about this in the uh, managing settings, settings session, which uh, is also available in the uh, video uh, tutorial section. So I will skip this for now. Um, and go to the next page. This is for the race strategist. Same here. Lots of actions available for the strategist. Ah, um, important to mention. 
many of these actions are um, an alternative for a voice command. You can talk to your race engineer your and your strategist. For example, you can uh, ask the uh, race engineer about the upcoming weather or you can ask uh, the race strategist about the upcoming weather by uh, asking the questions for ex the question for example is rain ahead also is rain coming or you can bind this question virtually to a button which then um, tells the race strategist that you want to know something about the weather why is this available yes because sometimes it's, it is uh, much faster uh, when you are in a close fight to push a button uh, to tell the race engineer for example to plan the next pit stop then to push the push to talk button say hey Jonah yes I'm here what can I do for you can you plan the pit stop please okay you know you know what I'm talking about Simply push the button plan pit stop and the race engineer will get a life and will the plan the pit stop for you. Okay. Last but not least, here you have the configuration page for the spotter. It will give you also some uh, commands to get information about your race position and and so on. Uh, this is uh, more or less a duplicate of what the race strategies, uh, race strategies is also capable of. And here you have uh, the opportunity to enable or disable uh, all the announcements or warnings this, this spotter can uh, issue. For example, side proximity alert, blue flag warnings and, and so on. Okay, so because we have um, disabled uh, some of the other modules, we are now ready to to create a configuration. And uh, I will show you here the config folder. When I press the finish button, you will see that th the file simulator configuration.ini will appear here. Okay, now he created several configuration files which uh, contain all the information we entered uh, um, with the wizard. And if you start the simulator configuration application now, which is, as I told you before, a low level tool or a tool with low level control about the configuration you can see what the wizard has generated. For example, in the so-called, oh, it's in German, sorry. Let's switch to English, speichern, and restart it. I told in the wizard that we want to have a German user interface, so everything was all right. Here is the tool, and now in English. And um, you can see, for example, here in the plugin page, which uh, contains all the plugins which are available for the um, uh, simulator control package, uh, what has been uh, w what has been generated by simulator setup. For example, we will select the race engineer plugin, which is active. Yes, we had selected it, and he simply says. The name of the race engineer is Jonah, the listener is on, the speaker is on, so this assistant is active and is willing to talk to you and will understand your voice commands. Um, the motion feedback plug is, uh, plugin is deactivated, the pedal calibration plugin is deactivated, as we have told in the module selection at the beginning of the wizard. Here, for example, the ACC configuration, you see the tire change is associated with button one. The refuel, as we said uh, in the wizard, is associated with dial one and so on. And now, yes, you can change this here. 
if you have enough knowledge of the low level um, um, the low level um, configuration of simulator controller which is very well documented here in the plugins and modes section for example here ACC Here you can see what what of what uh, options or, or uh, parameters are available, what they do, and how you can associate them. Yes, if you have enough time to read this, and uh, you can change this here, save it, and these files will get overwritten. But if you then go back to the simulator setup which works completely differently differently, um, and regenerate a configuration, your changes here will be lost. Sorry for that, but this is how it works at the moment. Um, any questions so far? Seems not, so... I'm it looks like I'm yeah I'm I'm telling you the right things. Okay, let's go back to simulator setup and take a look at the presets. The presets is a quite new functionality. I've, uh, I think I've introduced it uh, f six to, s to seven weeks ago. The idea behind the presets is not only to allow you to, for example, create default configurations for the later steps of uh, simulator uh, setup, but also to give you the opportunity to um, build special configurations, all of them which are possible using simulator configuration, but with the drawback, as I said before, that you then might never use simulator setup again. For example, this preset here will allow you, if you move it over here, to use different voices for each of the assistants. The system will now take a look at your voice, voice synthesizer method and will pick one of these uh, voices for each of the assistants and will write it into the configuration. We will do this now. We will leave it. Move to the end. Regenerate the configuration. And take a look again at the generated configuration. Uh, it's again in German, okay, uh, because uh, as I said before, in simulator setup, uh, it's uh, still in German. And switch to English, reopen it. And now let's take a look here at the race engineer. Aha, uh -huh. he has chosen as a speaker, David. Mark for the spotter and Zira for the strategist. And now this is fixed. Although you have here configured automatic voice, this default will be overwritten here 
So you will always have these three different voices for your assistants. Okay, now you have learned, you can tell which voice to use using the speaker argument here. So if you want to use a different one, you can overwrite it. Simply retype a different one from this list and save it with the drawback I already told you. But there's a solution for, for that. We will come to this. There are really, really many, many arguments or parameters you can use here. And for the most common, you can use the presets so you can stick with simulator setup for all your configuration tasks. Another important set of presets here is um, the collection of pit stop images. An upcoming coaching session will um, have the topic um, how to au manage automated pit stops using uh, the race engineer. And uh, not every simulator uh, is uh, very cooperative uh, when trying to, to control the pit stop from the outside. Especially a set of Corsa Competizione and uh, race room, uh, racing experience do not have any API which can be used from the outside to control the pit stop uh, dialog. And therefore, I am using a kind of image recognition algorithm to, to understand which options are currently available in the pit stop dialog. And to support this uh, image recognition algorithm in different languages for different screen sizes and so on, you have to have uh, these little pictures in a special location uh, of, the, uh, of the package so that the uh, simulator controller can run the image recognition algorithm. You can create these pictures on your own. It's a task of uh, about 20 minutes, uh, but you can also try to use one of these uh, pre-built packages. If you have, for example, a triple screen set up with full HD uh, screens and using the English user interface, because then you will have here compound in the German one, it's named Mischung. If you don't find your configuration here, you have to go through the uh, task to create these pictures on your own. The next session will uh, will go here into more details. Another very uh, interesting uh, package here is the Stream Deck icon collection. We will have a session on Stream Deck configuration also in the future. Um, Stream Deck is a very capable input device with uh, configurable um, with a configurable screen, uh, so you can 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 label your buttons with icons. And uh, we have a pre-built collection of around about 160 icons for all actions which are available uh, in Simulator Controller. And if you select this package these icons will be copied to your local configuration so you can use them in your Stream Deck layout and so on. So take a look here and use what you can, what is useful for you and as you have seen before some of them will build or create additional parameters or arguments for, for the plugins of the simulator controller package. Okay, so um, I have a last one for you. I think um, it is clear now which is the difference of simulator setup and simulator configuration. And as I said before, it is very important to stick with simulator setup as long as possible because you have this interactive style of configuration by pointed clicking 
whereas with simulator configuration you have to have a lot of low-level knowledge. But there are, for example, parts where you want to change the created configuration in a direction for which no preset is available. For example, you can change the name of, a, of an assistant, for example. Oh, if you don't like Jonah, you want to name it Tom, for example. There is no preset for that. But there is a different mechanism. It is uh, also documented in the uh, documentation, <laughs> for sure. Everything is documented in the documentation. Um, that is the so-called configuration patch method. Okay, here. Patching the configuration. Um, the idea behind this is that you can create a small file where you can add stuff to the configuration. For example, here, the uh, controller functions section, which I use to really, really implement additional power user features um, here. For, for example, I have a special voice command start simulator which calls a function in the application to start a Santa Cosa Competizione. Very, very power user stuff. But uh, you may want to start with this one, which is very easy to use. You have the replace command for plugin configuration and you want to replace in race in the race engineer configuration the name with this name and you want to replace the speaker on is the default automatic with this one Okay, let's remove this. If you only want to change the name of the race engineer, you have only to add these two lines to a file named configuration patch.ini and you have to place this file in document simulator controller setup here into this directory and when you then generate the next time you generate the configuration with simulator setup this configuration patch file will be loaded as well and these rules will be applied and you will see that you will have a generated configuration after that afterwards where the race engineer is no longer named Jonah but is named Tom so using the replace rule, you can replace parts of the configuration, whereas, which is obvious, with the add rule, you can add stuff to the generated configuration. For example, here, for the race strategist, I, rate, I add to the configuration that I want to use the Azure uh, voice generation service, whereas for the engineer, I want to use .NET and for the spotter also. This is because I found some of the voices in the uh, built-in voice generation quite good, but I need a third one, uh, which in German was not available, so I used the Azure service. Okay, so let's, uh, now let's Give me a second, because I want to reactivate my own configuration and will show you a really, really full-blown configuration in simulator setup, so you will get an idea what's going on there. I must reinstall my own config directory. Okay. 
so. Now, starting, starting in German, must switch to English. Starting again. And here it is. Okay. So, for sure, I have every module selected, every software installed. A really long list of controllers. I have uh, two button boxes and one stream deck. Let's take a look at them. My main button box looks like this. I have a second button box only with buttons. And I have two Stream Deck layouts for different layers. Um, okay, let's move on. For example, here the configuration for Assetto Corsa Competizione. You can see here. Now uh, it brings all the configured controllers onto the screen and shows you which actions has been associated with which of the buttons. And here you now we can see the difference between um, a so-called plugin action, which is associated with the plugin as a whole and is available all the time on a controller, and a mode action, which is only available when this mode is selected. Let's do it with this one. Uh, currently we are in the preview modus all modes. I will now switch to assistant mode. And you can see I have nothing associated here, no function associated with any of the uh, controls. So in the assistant mode, the controller here is empty, but there's a top row. There are associated um, actions because these actions are from the coming pages and are not bound to a given mode. They are available all the time. This is the same here for the Stream Deck um, actions where I only use um, buttons which are available all the time. I don't want to switch here according to context. The context switching only appears on my button boxes. Um, I have a mode selector here. This switch, uh, whenever I toggle this switch, the meanings of this uh, area will switch according to the currently selected mode. Okay, let's go back to the pit stop mode here and you can see we have um, commands on this controller from the pit stop mode and we have commands or actions on this controller from the pit stop mode. All you can see the, the functions and associations you can see here in this list. When we move on to the next page, unfortunately, it will reopen all the stuff always on the main screen, which is good on day-to-day -day work, but not here during the session. You can see here that uh, all the actions from the assistants as I said, are actions which are always available, are bound here at the top row, here also at the top row, and at the stream decks. 
We can now move on to the motion feedback plugin or motion feedback module, which introduces a different mode. And now you can see here that these buttons in the motion mode change their meaning. This is no longer refuel or increase tire pressure. No, in the pit stop mode here, in, in, the, in the motion mode, it has a meaning of increase the intensity of the heave, the hive effect, the heave effect, the pitch effect, the roll effect, and so on. So you can double use, triple use, and use as much as you like a given button on your controller with different meanings depending on the currently selected mode. Okay, I've seen Peter has already must have must leave. So any any questions from your side? This is not the case, obviously. Then I think. I have told told almost everything about general setup and configuration. Um, you can take a look at um, the managing settings uh, video, which is available already in the video tutorial settings uh, se uh, channel about managing settings for the race assistants. There are much more settings available for them. Um, but uh, these settings are uh, depending on the car, the track, and maybe also the session you uh, will have um, um, for your race. So this is, has nothing to do with the general setup and configuration. So we have a different uh, uh, tutorial um, session for this. And we will also have uh, upcoming sessions for really in-depth understanding of uh, voice control um, and uh, voice interaction with uh, race assistants. And we will also have an upcoming session on managing uh, automated pit stops. So a lot, of um, a lot of things to come in the future. And uh, yes, for now and today, I hope uh, all these... Uh, narration of me is uh, of any value for you and you have learned something and uh, you are now able to configure everything and if not you know where to find me use the discord ask your questions i'm here to help and thank you for today and we will see or hear you next week us next week bye bye